uh, something out. Yes. yes. Should we start? Yeah, yeah, start. Okay, okay. Assalamu alaikum guys, this is Amna, you're watching Something Odd. And uh, this is a really special episode and we have with us all the way from London, the writer and producer of What's Love Got To Do With It, Jemima Goldsmith Khan. Should I add a Khan with it? It's on your well, <laughs> <laughs> It's a very good question. And I sort of, I, I, because my old work credits were under the name of Khan, yes. I call myself Khan for work and I call myself Goldsmith in every other aspect of my life. So mm -hmm. for the purposes of this interview, which is about the film that's coming out, let's call me Khan. Khan. And I think for every Pakistani, you will always be Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my children are Khan, so yes, it's suits me to be Khan for, for, for some purposes. Yeah. Jemima, you've spoken extensively about this film being a love letter to Pakistan and the need to drive a positive narrative uh, between Pakistan and, and the Western world. But I'm going to dig a little deeper. Why did you feel that need? I mean, I'd love to know what instances were you drawing upon when you were writing the film? Um, do you mean instances where I have felt that Pakistan has been negatively portrayed? No, instances that you experienced when you lived in Pakistan, that no, you carried what, 20 years uh, with you. Well, so what I was actually responding to was, you know, friends of mine in Pakistan lamenting the fact that in very successful, well-known films like Zero Dark Thirty or TV shows like Homeland, the Pakistanis are always the baddies, the shady ISI operatives, mm -hmm. the, you know, the terror, you know, there's, there's just, and, and Pakistan generally is seen as a very black and white, scary place, mostly in the West. And my experience of Pakistan, obviously politics aside, um, was of a very warm, hospitable, loving um, population who embraced me and um, and I, and it, it was very vibrant and colorful. And so I wanted to show the music and the color and the old buildings and the architecture and recreate things like Yusuf Salahuddin's Haveli on yeah. screen for a rom com in the streets of London. So um, it it was it was really that motivation because I feel though as though we've all seen the bad stuff. We've all seen the darker narrative particularly in news stories and on our screens. And I wanted just to show a different side. So how have your friends responded to it? I mean, I, they must have seen it by now. Pakistani friends? Yeah, no, 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 no. Your British friends. Oh, British friends. Well, I've got really nice friends, so they're all going to be <laughs> nice about it. <laughs> Everyone's been really friendly and nice but and supportive and enthusiastic. But the main thing that has touched my heart so much is to what extent British Pakistanis have shown up for our film. So right. far, we did an exit poll. I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this, but we did an exit poll outside cinemas and 60% of our audience has identified as South Asian in the UK, okay, in wow. cinemas in the UK, across everywhere, Birmingham, Manchester, yeah, the, the, the diverse areas, but also Chelsea. I mean, they looked to all the cinemas. So, uh, and the response has just been overwhelmingly so lovely and positive and kind about the film. So I think um, people understood what the intention behind it was Absolutely. and have responded to that. And um, it's been very touching for me, really like a very moving experience. And I felt like, I don't know, it feels like I feel kind of closer than Pax to Pakistan than ever in a weird way because of this experience. We really feel like you never left. <laughs> I know it's once you've been there for 10 years you're there forever <laughs> you're there forever absolutely Jemima you're a you're a documentary filmmaker and you've done some really hard-hitting uh, series award-winning why did you choose this genre I mean because people would regard it as a chick flick rom-com it is at mm. the end of the day fluff which we love but yeah. will it get the impact that you're hoping for I mean listen if you want you know uh brilliant uh, 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 documentaries about uh, uh, Pakistan. You you already have a double Oscar award winning Pakistani documentary maker in the in the form of, uh, of Sharmin Obey Chinoy. I'm not going to compete with her. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I, you're right. I normally make documentaries and I make them about serious subjects. So for example, I made a TV series, a documentary TV series about the 
um, Adnan Saeed case about a an American Pakistani boy, uh, American boy with Pakistani uh, heritage, who was jailed uh, for life for uh, su- for supposedly uh, allegedly killing his uh, school high school sweetheart ex girlfriend, and was put in jail. Uh, largely because of Islamophobia, because a white American um, specialist said in the trial, or so-called specialist, said in the trial, oh, Muslims do honor killings. And so on that basis, with no DNA or any other evidence, he was put away for life. And he's only just got freed, partly as a result of the evidence that came out in our documentary series. And so I understand the importance of documentaries, and that's why I make them. But I also think that making a film like this one, where you want to provide a different um, view of a country, um, sometimes you need to do it with a lighter touch. So I felt that you could get things across with humor, um, possibly more effectively than banging people over the heads with it. And I I remember Freud said, um, a joke is just the truth with a smile. And I felt I wanted to, to do this story with a smile. Yeah, we're very happy with that choice, actually. <laughs> and we expect other films coming out from your, drawing from your experience in Pakistan, a biopic, perhaps? Sometimes. Oh, my future. God. Can you imagine if I did a biopic? Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> going to, I'm going to take the liberty of asking you that if you ever did think of a biopic, who would you want uh-huh. cast as yourself and as Imran Khan? Oh, my God. No, I, I don't think I would do a biopic. I think that it's so difficult because there's so you have to think about how other people will react. And I, I just it had to come out of my head as a as a fictional story. But obviously, it's drawn very much from my experiences in real life. And some of the characters are based on people in real life and the stories and the anecdotes. And I've even stolen some of the lines that I heard in real life. <laughs> so it is real in that sense. But um, no, I and I don't know who I would get to play me. I wouldn't want to be that presumptuous. <laughs> Oh, getting the cast together must have been an ordeal. Or was it tough? Was it easy? Because you've got some um, winning actors on board. You've got Emma Thompson, Lily James, you've got Shubana Azmi, and of course, Sajjal Ali. And I'd li- love to hear that story when you made that call to Yusuf Salahuddin. What was the, what was the, the, the brief that what kind of a, a character do we want? I actually was looking at those texts the other day because I was showing her. I was showing Sajjal. Um, I just rang uh, Yusuf and said, we need a beautiful, uh, nuanced, intelligent, um, versatile actress who is who can who can rival Lily James. It was really important that the arranged marriage candidate who was Pakistani was every bit as interesting and and gorgeous as our our white female lead, Lily James, because I had felt that quite often, even in films that I really love that tackle this subject matter um, that have come out in England or in America, the arranged marriage candidate can see, seem a bit of a joke character. Yeah. Like, you know that that's never going to work and they're not for real. And I really wanted people to understand why this boy, this this, you know, you know, our, our lead character played by Shazad Latif, the character of Kaz, I really want people to understand why he agreed to the choice so readily. Yeah. We have and Sajjal does yet. that. Like you meet Sajjal, you see Sajjal on screen and you're like, marry her. <laughs> <laughs> you're rooting for her. Absolutely. Oh, she, oh, and she, to... she's a brilliant actress, don't you think? Absolutely. She's one of our finest. I mean, she's, mm. I like, she's so versatile. And but then I, I so yeah, and her, her, so then I, Yusuf put me onto her manager, Hamid, and, and it was, it was sort of, we saw, then, you know, the director met her on screen, you know, on Zoom, and she did a brilliant audition, and I remember, I remember one of the producers saying, that tear that ran down her her face was so big. How did she? <laughs> How did she, <laughs> she manage that? Cried in her audition, and the tear was like as big as a light bulb. Your sons love the film. You, you've spoken yes. about that film, Kasim and Sulaiman. Do you think Thank they you. would ever agree to an assisted marriage? You know, I think the point of an assisted marriage is it has to come from the children. 
Mm. And at this point, they have very much not brought up that conversation. <laughs> Because all <laughs> of Pakistan will agree to be matchmaker for that to happen. <laughs> Now, last of all, what are you expecting from the Pakistani audience? Because, I mean, all of us, we're really looking forward to it, watching it this weekend. And uh, there was a bit of fear, would it release in Pakistan or not? But thankfully, it, it is running yeah. tomorrow. Uh, yeah. What are you expecting? What kind of a response? Um. Well, I hope it will match the response that we've had here in the UK. I mean, obviously, I'm nervous. I always get nervous of what audience will think, especially in Pakistan. Um, but I hope that people will feel that it's kind of, it's, you know, there was something very important, which is that aside from the whole issue of arranged marriage, a lot of my friends in Pakistan, particularly, um, you know, in Lahore, where I was living, would say, you know, Pakistan's always seen as this really backwards place, this really dark place where there's no kind of fun and liveliness. And so the the Lahore scenes that I showed in the UK were very, very surprising to British audiences, you know, and to my, my non-Pakistani British friends, they were like, really? You have parties in Lahore? And people dance and it's like that at a Mendy. And I think there questions. was a lot of, yeah. So, <laughs> so I think that I did that in response to uh, some of the laments that I heard in Pakistan about, you know, not showing that side of Pakistan too. But I hope that people will, you know, I, I hope they'll enjoy it. Most of all, it's just entertainment. I want people, I want people to laugh and to cry and to enjoy it and tell their friends to go and see it. I'm, I'm sure they will. And I'm sure we'll all love it. And my last question, because I know we're running out of time. Would you say that you've written this film as a Britisher or as a Pakistani? I think that's a brilliant question. You have to <laughs> tell me the answer once you've watched the film. I will get in touch with you then. But what do you <laughs> <Yeah>. think? <laughs> um, well, I honestly feel a I feel as though Pakistan became part of my identity because I feel that 20 to 30 is an extremely formative time. So in all seriousness, I felt that it had a very profound effect on me. And I am different from other women of my background and age that have not had that experience. I do see things somewhat differently as a result, and certainly from my family, you know. Um, and so I'm always going to be influenced by that, is my most kind of honest but slightly boring answer. <laughs> no, no, not at all, not at all. But um, but thank you again for making the film. And uh, thank I'm you. Sure it's going to be fabulous. It looks fabulous from whatever we've seen online so far. Thank you. And, Let and me know. Just message me on, on social media. I absolutely will. I will DM you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Lovely to meet you, Amna. Bye. Bye.